So this is our first example. The second example, which is still in glycolysis, involves another compound, which is called phospho enol pyruvate. Phosphoenol pyruvate. It has three um, parts and the reaction actually has three steps. And we will see how it goes. So uh, our compound uh, looks like uh, that. We have a compound that looks like that. This is phosphoenol pyruvate. So what happens to phosphoenol pyruvate? Again we have a kinase. The kinase would take that a phosphoric acid group, add it to an ADP molecule, the ADP molecule would be changed into an ATP molecule and we have our ADP synthesized and uh, again it will add a hydrogen instead of the removed uh, phosphoric acid group and we would have our compound looking like that. So now we don't have phospho anymore, so it's an old pyruvate. Phospho and old pyruvate can be written just PEP for short. PEP for short. So this is an old pyruvate. And then we have another enzyme which is called enolase. Enolase were just change the uh, structure. It will not add up or remove any other um, atoms. What would happen is that the, this hydrogen would be uh, moved here and so the double bond would be moved to the other direction. So the compound would look like that. COOH, which is this part. COOH, the carboxylic acid group, and we have C double bond O, a carboxyl group, and then we have CH3, which is pyruvate. This compound is um, pyruvate. So this is the second example. The third example occurs or happens in Cripps cycle. citric acid cycle. It's the same thing. So our compound is called um, succinyl CoA. Succinyl CoA. Technically succinate looks like that. So succinate it's a very symmetrical compound. So we have a carboxylic acid group then CH2, CH2, and another uh, carboxylic acid group. Succinyl CoA is different in that bit. So we have here the CO part, and then we have this coenzyme A, which is linked to the carbons through a sulfur atom. And then we have the rest of the compound as it is, same thing. So how does this reaction uh, produce ATP? Along in the um, inputs of this reaction, we have a GDP molecule plus a phosphoric acid group. GDP is called guanosine diphosphate. Just like adenosine diphosphate. It needs a extra phosphoric acid group in order to become DTP. 
the reaction happens and uh, the enzyme is called uh, succinate-CoA synthase so the enzyme that synthesizes succinate-CoA and it synthesizes succinate the CoA group is removed from our compound here as we can see obviously so CoA dash ACE H this is called enzyme CoA which will be used later in order to um, uh, synthesize acetyl CoA which is important for the citric acid cycle, Krebs cycle. This is why this reaction occurs there. And we don't really uh, need to know that for the moment. We're just concerned about the ADP centers. So this um, compound is formed and throughout this reaction the DDP will be added to the phosphoric acid group that we have here in order to produce GTP. GTP. Okay, the thing is that GDP can add this extra uh, phosphoric acid group that it gained here to an ADP molecule, changing it into ATP. Changing it into ATP. And this is the point. This is how the ATP is synthesized throughout this reaction. So this is uh, our third uh, example. Next time, we're going to talk about oxidative phosphorylation, which involves NADH, FADH2, and we will know how, um, how it works. Why is NADH producing three ADPs, FADH just two ADPs? We're going to uh, know that. And so I hope uh, that uh, today's uh, video was easy and useful. And until the next time, I thank you for watching and see you.